Today in series of duplex scale interviews, we have with us the famous laparoscopic surgeon, Dr. Mufazal Lakhrawala, who is the Chairman Institute of Minimal Access Surgical and Research Center, Saifi Hospital, Mumbai. He is the founder of Digestive Health Institute and Section Chief for Division of Laparoscopic Oncology. He is also the founder of Asia Consensus Meeting on Metabolic Surgery Society and key member of Asian Endosurgery Task Force Society and International Sleep Gastrectomy Expert Panel. He is the recipient of prestigious award, the Humanitarian of the Year, awarded by All India Human Rights Association, Maharashtra of the Year, Medicine 2017, and honored with many other awards. He has published several articles in peer-reviewed international and national journals focused on bariatric and metabolic medicine. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this interview. Thank you. Thank you. So let's begin with the first question. Please provide your insights about bariatric surgery for the treatment of morbid obesity. First and foremost, I'd like to tell you that bariatric surgery has quite be, often been likened to another form of weight loss. So it's not a cosmetic form of weight loss at all. It is a life-saving surgery. Uh, today, WHO has declared that obesity is a life-threatening, chronic, uh, relapsing disease uh, of fat accumulation, which is causing a lot of side effects and comorbidities like uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, uric acid, infertility, there are 40 different types of cancers linked to <clears throat> obesity alone. So if uh, there is one stone you can throw in some direction to cure most of these, that's bariatric surgery. Yeah, uh, bariatric surgery today, the way it is practiced is uh, um, very, very safe, very effective, and is probably your best shot at long-term sustained weight loss with the least amount of side effects. Yeah. Uh, so, Doctor, moving on to the next one. Uh, when compared between single incision bariatric surgery and conventional, which method is more reliable and also any particular criteria for choosing the same? Yeah, this is this is a nice question. <clears throat> so, I'll tell you how this whole thing started, all right? Single incision surgery, as the word suggests, is probably making one incision. Now, the idea of single incision surgery was to hide the incision into your navel so that no, no scars would be seen. And uh, bariatric surgery was one of those surgeries we used to practice uh, gallbladder, appendix, hernias, various other things. But bariatric surgery was one thing that most people stayed away from mm -hmm. only because the size of patients and uh, the livers were very big. And, and as it is, bariatric surgery was a complex surgery, so people tried to stay away from it. And then <clears throat> uh, I had a lot of young girls who came to me. Uh, and as you would know, in India, there's a taboo for any girl to be operated for any kind of disease, right? Uh, even if you were to say you had an appendicectomy before marriage, most uh, in-laws would think that they would, that would affect your chances of getting con conceiving or getting pregnant. So those mindsets are set in stone over the years, and it's very difficult to change mindsets in the Indian cultural backgrounds. And uh, that started my journey into single incident bariatric surgery. We were the first guys to do a single incident sleeve in Asia. And today we are the largest, uh, we've done the largest number of single incident bariatric in the world. Yeah, so that that's the reason why I started it off. Uh, today I've, I'm invited world across to demonstrate single incident bariatric surgery. Uh, the ad advantage is that <laughs> I, I quite often sit at interviews like this, sometimes press interviews, mm -hmm. wherein someone's lost hell of a lot of weight and uh, the interviewer asks that person, so how did you lose this weight? And he'll say, keto diet and I tried. Mm -hmm this and that and everything and uh, I just look at him and smile and uh, he and I both know the reason why he's lost so much weight but of course Lee, the interview asked me that so doctor you believe that uh, this has worked for this person I said yeah some people are lucky <laughs> and they lose weight the other advantage is that I quite often get <clears throat> invited to weddings by young girls and uh, they tell me this is the only reason why you're getting married is you but please don't come to our wedding because people know that we've had the surgery. So single incident bariatric surgery, if done effectively and safely, is very, very good because it gives you the option of uh, not telling someone that you've had a surgery. Um, it gives the same kind of results as uh, conventional laparoscopic surgery. Today, open bariatric surgery is almost not practiced. Nobody practices it. So um, 
it is an advantage. It is mainly done, at least to start off with, it is done in earlier, uh, younger patients without any scars on the abdomen because it's, it's basically scarless. There is always so, also the advantage of it causing little lesser pain. So if you were to ask me, 30% of our work today is done is single incident bariatric surgery. We've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got uh, people from the media, we've got politicians, their children. We've operated a lot of people uh, with single incision and they have the ability of wearing a bikini and not letting someone know that they've had a bariatric surgery. <laughs> right. Uh, so, Doctor, my next question to you is, according to you, what is the incidence of type 2 diabetes in Indian obese population? Yeah, so that's again a great question. It's it's like a knockout question because uh, not something that you, I don't know whether you're aware of, but India ranks number three in terms of obesity ranks in the world. America comes first, China comes second, and we, we are number three. You don't see so many obese people around. And sadly, we are number two in terms of type 2 diabetes in the world. So China comes one. So if you were to call it a diabetes op epidemic, we are number two. Yeah. And uh, the problem is that uh, it's affecting younger populations, younger generations. Uh, you know, there was a paper that came out with from Dr. Yagnik from Pune who actually said thin fat baby syndrome. Mm. And when he wrote about this paper, people uh, were actually quite astonished because it had two plural verbs, thin and fat in the yeah. same sentence. And people thought that it was an Indian who probably didn't know his English right. But the, the fact is that our babies for the same BMI have a lesser muscle mass, a lesser bone mass, and we have more fat mass. Yeah. And that's why we are predisposed, uh, a thrifty gene which was which served us and we conserved a lot of uh, proteins and, and fat and all to, to last for the famines and times like that, when there was not too much food to eat. Today has become uh, actually a problem for us. Mm -hmm. So as we grow as Asians and as Indians, most of our fat is located around the belly. Mm -hmm. It's the visceral fat which is harmful to us. Um, and that is what is causing the type 2 diabetes epidemic. Um, we get it younger, we have more complications, and we die sooner. So the young onset diabetes in Asia is troubling world across. Uh, today, every five seconds, someone dies of a diabetes related death somewhere in the world. Today, um, with the money becoming scarce, and with the government not spending so much on healthcare expenditure, we don't even have some of the, the money to spend on some of the drugs that we do, the modern day drugs. So if you were to be obese and diabetic today, the world associations like the IDF, International Diabetes Federation, the American Diabetes Association, all have said that you should consider bariatric surgery. And most guidelines like the Diabetes Surgery Summit guidelines, which had most endocrinologists on its panel, have actually said that they prioritize people with a BMI of above 35 in India. And if they're obese and they've tried diabetes uh, remission and not got it, mm -hmm. they actually recommend bariatric surgery. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor, I would like to move on to the next one. So, uh, can you please elaborate on the deficiencies in patients that have undergone bariatric surgery and also how can these deficiencies be managed? Yeah. So, most people think that if you had bariatric surgery, you'd invariably land up with deficiencies, right? The fact is that today, as we sit in our population, 60% uh, of them are iron deficient, especially the girls. Uh, we have uh, at least a 50 plus percent of vitamin B12 deficiency. We have vitamin D deficiency that is caused because of the obese gene. So to start with, we've got more than 50 percent of our population are already deficient in all these things. So sometimes we never used to measure these values before surgery, now we do. So we do know that they are already deficient. Mm -hmm. After bariatric surgery, depending on the type of bariatric surgery you've had, there are certain deficiencies that do occur. Uh, if you were to have a sleeve gastrectomy, the chances are that you might be iron deficient, but not deficient in other forms of multivitamins. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you were to have a gastric bypass, uh, then the chances are that you'd be deficient in B12, calcium and iron because food does not enter the part of the antrum of the stomach and the first part of the duodenum and the jejunum, mm -hmm. which absorbs food. And if you were to do more malabsorptive surgeries, like the mini gastric bypass, though it sounds mini, it's actually malabsorptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you were to do the more complex ones, like the SADI and various other malabsorptive surgeries, then you need not only proteins, but you also need B12, calcium, iron, fat-soluble multivitamins, water-soluble multivitamins like A, D, E, and K. Uh, nutrients like zinc, copper, manganese, selenium. So if you had a completely malabsorptive surgery, be careful. 
Uh, so, Doctor, moving on to the next question. Uh, you've worked with a patient uh, which has lost more than 100 uh, kgs. So, can you please discuss that? So, we've actually had lots of patients who've lost yeah. more than 100 kilos. Recently in the news, we, we helped someone who lost more than 300 kilos, right? Yeah. So, yes, we have interesting patients who've lost more than 100 and maintain that right. over five or six years. I'll tell you this case example of uh, a young uh, lady who came to us. Yeah. She actually was struggling with, uh, uh, she came to me at least five or six years back. Okay. And that time she came to me because she was 200 plus kilos and uh, she had a cancer of the uh, uh, uterus. Okay. And nobody was ready to operate on her. Um, and she was very, very high risk because of her weight. Yeah. So they said, okay, this crazy guy is there, go to him. <laughs> and I actually landed up operating on her for her cancer of her uterus. Okay. <clears throat> And at that point of time, I did tell her that I think you should consider bariatric surgery. A, because uh, because of your weight, you've got cancer of the uterus, which is a direct link. Forty different types of cancers are linked directly to obesity. Yeah. yeah. And the second thing is that uh, I said, if you survive this cancer, maybe we, we hope and pray that you get fitter, slimmer, and healthier, and, and we can prevent some of the other cancers from coming on. So, lo and behold, two years later, she came to me and was considering bariatric surgery. Okay. I did land up doing a sleeve gastrectomy on her. And uh, today, I think we are around four years down that day. And uh, she came and saw me just the last week and uh, we started off with 208 kilos and today she's 90 kilos. Okay. And uh, she's done very, very well. She's got her whole life back uh, for herself. She's not only cancer free, but she's also obesity free now. So. That's, that's one case which uh, is quite close to my heart. And uh, I think somewhere where I've helped someone change their entire life. Right. Uh, so also about the post-operative, uh, if you could mention something on that, like, uh -huh. you know, probably for this particular patient or in general. So in so terms of uh, post-operative care, uh, she's a singer uh, mm -hmm. by profession. And um, I do know that she, she's been diligent because the more weight she lost, the more diligent she was in terms of her follow-up and everything. And she's been one patient who's followed up with us very, very regularly. And that's that's probably one of the reasons why her outcomes have been so good. Right. Uh, some patients do well, some don't, <clears throat> only because the reason that they fall out in their follow-ups. Okay. So I would recommend that everyone uh, at least makes one customary visit to us every year so that they are on track, uh, taking their multivitamins, doing well, right. and making sure that the weight does not come back um, again. Yes. Uh, so doctor, based on what you just said, how important is patient compliance? So like I said, most patients do really well if they do follow up. Right. And from our side, we try and make all efforts. We send them SMSs, we, uh, we, we send them calls, we send them emails. Uh, but sometimes patients just believe that in the first two years of bariatric surgery, it's the honeymoon period, where right. they do really well. And they sometimes pick up wrong habits of eating because at that point of time, whatever they do, despite whatever they do, they actually tend to lose weight. Yeah. Around the two-year period is when they start gaining some of the weight back, and that's when it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. So I think what you said quite correctly is that if you do follow up, the up, up, uh, outcomes are very, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, you do get very good results. Um, if there is some things like you pick up a sugar craving or if you pick up uh, deficiencies, we'll be other ones who would probably be able to pick that up in you. So my recommendation and would be a worldwide recommendation is uh, treat bariatric surgery to a common analogy like a cancer care. Mm -hmm. In cancer care, we do follow up with our oncologist and a chemotherapist, right, to stay on track. Mm -hmm. We always go back and see, is my cancer coming back? So obesity is something like that. Is my obesity <laughs> coming back? Treat it like that and I think you'll do well. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, huh? sir. It was a pleasure having you here. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.